Hey guys, you're here with me, Alicia Workman, and this is your self-love coach. This video is all about understanding what is feminine and masculine energy in the relationship. to do a three-part series on this video because I do get a lot of questions as to what masculine and feminine energy is and I realize that a lot of people don't understand this concept and I also didn't understand this concept when I started learning about it and it took me a few years to get my head around so for you I want to make it as simple and easy for you to be able to understand what it is in a way that you can relate to it in your own life and not have any complications around this topic when I talk about feminine and masculine energy in the relationship, it doesn't have to be just between a male and a female, but it also happens with couples that are of the same sex and they also face the same challenges. To make this nice and simple for you, I want you to think of a time where in your life you've had somebody say to you or you've heard someone say or you may have said it, where they say that person has a really positive energy or that person actually has a really negative energy or a bubbly energy. Basically, a masculine and a feminine energy is just like that. It's how the person is coming across and what is actually the underlying drive for the person. The reason that this is so widely talked about, and especially since around 1960, is because that is the time when the women started to enter the workforce. And when we saw women entering the workforce, we saw that women started to have a lot more of their masculine energy come out. As a side Side effect from this because the masculine energy is so dominant and if most women are working 40 hours a week that energy in them is really driving them throughout their day and it's very hard to come back to your feminine energy it was also a trend and noticeable that men were going over to their feminine energy instead of being in their masculine and their feminine energy is all about feelings and emotions and not having as much as as much of a drive or not wanting to work full-time wanting to stay home and nurture a child and have their wife go to work and whilst this is really good and it helps us and the world is growing in line with that there is actually really really big side effects and it affects your brain and the levels and the hormones that you produce to give you some background and talk to you about what masculine energy is so that you can understand it and relate it to yourself that is when you're in the energy of doing and achieving and goal setting and striving for something so you're planning ahead and you're thinking forward. Feminine energy, on the other hand, is being present and being in the moment and being really in touch with your feelings and your intuition. For myself, as you can see, I'm obviously a woman and when I'm in my feminine energy, I'm normally feeling my best and my happiest. And for a man, for him, when he's in his masculine energy, that is when he will be feeling his best and his happiest. We actually need and what we're looking for is a balance between the two. So what can happen is there can be a man that is far too masculine and if there is a man that's too masculine, he actually won't be in touch with his feelings, he won't be able to emphasize with you and he'll be too manly and it actually creates him to be a really angry man. And if on the other hand you have a woman that is really feminine, she's often looked at as a doormat and somebody who can't stand up to herself and is quite weak as you may call it and can't actually hold a back for herself. What we ideally want to do is we want to have an even balance or so between the two. We want to know that we can access our masculine or our feminine when we need it and use it in the right place at the right time. It comes into relationships and it doesn't matter as I said whether it's a female and a male or a male and a male in a relationship or whatever you please, there's always one that's more masculine and more feminine. If you have two masculines together, they will constantly be butting heads and same with the feminine. You can't have two of the same. One must be more of a leader than the other one. 
The reason it's really important in romantic relationships is because for a woman, if she's in her workplace and is masculine and in that driven zone, that is great because she's going to be able to get stuff done. But if you go to a man in your masculine energy, it will actually make him lose attraction for you and you will push him to his feminine side. And for a man, if he's on his feminine side, the woman will struggle to be attracted to him because that is not what we are attracted to. And that also happens in all sorts of relationships. You're attracted to the opposite of what you are. This is in your natural being. So for me, I feel most feminine and most attracted to a masculine man when he's being masculine and I'm being feminine. And for a wonderful masculine man, he will be attracted to a woman that is in her feminine. The reason that dating is so common and people love to date and have a great time in their dating process is because the man is able to be in his masculine energy and be a man to please the woman. And the woman is relaxed, she's laid back, and she's letting the man take the lead and spoil her. Now I want you to envision for a moment, envision that a woman is taking a man out on a date and the man is waiting for her to take all the lead and he will just follow on and, and go to the restaurants that she wants to go to and it's all a surprise for him. Straight away we can see that is not so attractive because the man being the masculine is what the background is in our history and that is what we generally will be attracted to and same for the feminine energy as well. Have you ever heard of a female who's quite successful, she, she's in a successful job, or maybe she runs her own business, and she says, men are intimidated by me, and I just can't get a guy because I'm intimidating and I'm successful. It's actually not the issue. Being successful is not the issue. The issue is that you're in your masculine zone all the time to get that success, and you take that masculinity into the relationship, and therefore there's only room for one masculine energy. So you're pushing away the guy that is masculine and the guy that you do want because you're not giving him a chance to be masculine because that's your energy zone and he's being pushed to his feminine. So he can't feel like a man around you. In reverse of that, have you ever heard of guys say, women just want men that have money? Also, and I can say that this is so true, it's not about a man that has money. It's about a man that is secure and that can support the woman because it makes her feel feminine. And that is what we're looking for. A bit of background as to what we attract also comes from our childhood. If we've had a very dominant mother, we may then go and choose a really dominant partner. And this can often happen for men. If you've had a very dominant mother growing up, you may have had your masculinity squished right down and therefore you're more on your feminine side. So you go and attract a masculine woman that is just like your mother. And your lesson in that is to get in touch with your masculine side and really build on that to be in touch with it because that is safe and that is good for you. And also for women, if you've had a childhood where you may have been abused or you've been in a situation where you haven't felt safe, you've had to learn that being in your masculine energy is what keeps you safe because you're standing up for yourself, you're very strong, you're taking over. And so that is where you can become more, mas more masculine as you grow up because you feel that that has gotten you to be safe and that is ingrained into your brain and that is what you believe and is also linked in with your unconscious mind. There is so much depth into this topic and another part of this is actually hormones and realizing that as a woman when we go over to our masculine energy it actually creates stress for us if we can't bring it back to our feminine energy because we end up producing a lot of testosterone which doesn't really do much for us and the same for men if they're over in their feminine energy they're really producing a lot of estrogen which doesn't really do anything for them it actually makes them become more like a female and it it makes them get angry. So you want to be able to have a really good balance and know when you need to bring yourself back. If my video is so far helping you today and you're getting a really good understanding of masculine and feminine energy, please make sure that you do subscribe to my channel and like this video and please do share a comment and let me know any questions that you have around this topic and I'm really excited to continue on with these videos and share more in depth how you can understand and how you can recognize if somebody is in their masculine or in their feminine. To recap over this video, you have a masculine and you have a feminine energy and both are in 
side. So I have both masculine and feminine energy and I can use them at both times, but often we get stuck in one energy which typically doesn't serve us. It doesn't serve a female to always be in her feminine and it doesn't serve a male to always be in his masculine. We need to be in touch with both, but at the right times. And that is exactly what I'm going to share with you in my next few videos. And I really look forward to seeing you there.